underway away from uh, Oak Grove and a quick little jaunt of four hours and 20 minutes uh, <laughs> back to Miami Valley. I, I didn't, re I knew I realized, obviously it's simple math, but I just hit uh, maps yesterday when I was in Kentucky. I went over to Walmart, get some stuff for uh, Eric and I uh, wanted to wash my suit and stuff. Anyway, uh, I click on maps from my bedroom now, obviously, <clears throat> well, such a long trip, you can make up time. But uh, from my bedroom to that Walmart across the street from Oak Grove Racetrack was 11 hours and 20 minutes to drive straight home. <laughs> so, so I will make that journey, but it'll be broke up into two parts, three parts now. Um, Miami Valley for what a mission back up to uh, Ohio. Um, back up to Ohio to train the babies tomorrow. There's a number of babies sick and actually Cowboy by the Sea, I guess, kicked the wall and cut his leg and he's going to need a week, a week off. And it's alright, he's fine. Um, uh, and then after the babies go, there's a number of them sick, as I said. So I think there's 12 scratches. I said to Jason, everything, regardless, goes very, very easy on Wednesday. I want no stressful training trips for these horses. This is really the first time anybody has been sick in this barn for the most part. A couple here and there, but no real sickness. So want to nip it in the bud. Anybody sick goes on antibiotics. Anybody on the brink can train very light, but I want them watched closely after they train. So uh, when I'm done training, then I'll go back home. So make a long, uh, a long trip back to uh, to Ontario, but chop it up into three parts. It's not really going to be a big deal. So I woke up this morning, had a great weekend. We're going to talk about the weekend. Uh, well, more more yesterday. We already talked about Sunday. Had a great day Sunday. I think we raced six. All six were in the top two, if I'm not mistaken. A great night and a big night for Mario. Both his horses were winners. First win for Warwick Yuri. So congratulations, to everybody there. It looks like all the patience paid off and all the planning was bang on as to this point with war we hear you know it's hard guys i i'm well aware that it's very very hard to plan over a year ahead when i came when i came to you last year and said listen war we hear you is not going to make a two-year-old we're going to turn him out bring him back this is what i want to see from him as they train down and that's what we saw everything worked out perfectly so far, and now it's just up to where we hear how good he is, but he certainly looked like he's well on his way and looked great the other night at Flamborough. For such a big horse, if you've seen him in person, it's hard to believe that he knew he would navigate Flamborough that well, but looked very, very good doing it. And then Castile's continue looked even better this week than uh, than she had in previous starts. So another uh, another win for Castile's in a, a great run heading into the city of London, and that will. Uh, lead us right into the Ontario Sire Stakes season. So, a great start for those two in particular. <laughs> so, I get out. <laughs> I leave the hotel today. And, of course, I want to sit out just get a big Starbucks, drive down the road, punch in Starbucks, six minutes in the opposite direction. I'm like, it's acceptable. I'll go. Driving down, getting ready to do my video, and drive by this huge gated place Fort Campbell, geez that's a nice it's a nice spot in, around this area, like it's built up a little, it's not as small as I thought it was, it's quite a, quite a big area actually, I got there at night and then the next day was focused on racing so it's not like I traveled around and looked around but it's a pretty big place and you can see it's growing, they're building it up uh, the, the community itself so um, GPS says turn right I turn right, welcome to Fort Campbell Oh, this is cool. It's a gated community. Oh, no. Oh, dear. No, 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 no. This isn't a gated community. Yep, this is an army base. And there's no turning around. I'm driving up to uh, four gates of armed, heavily armed guards. Don't, don't shoot the Canadian. No, don't do that. Uh, roll my window down. Can I help you, sir? He said, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm in the wrong place. He said, oh, really? I said, yeah. I said, my, my GPS says to, to come here for Starbucks, but I suspect that won't be permitted. <laughs> and he goes, no, you have to sign in if you're a civilian. I said, there's no need of that. How, how do I? He goes, we can, we can get you out of here. So he stopped the entire flow of traffic. And this is a big place. Like Families live on here. It's like a, a city within a city. It's really cool. So turned around 
and I turned around and stop all the traffic, and turn Anthony around the Canadian, and kick him out of Fort Campbell. <laughs> You'd think that my GPS would tell me this is an army base, a heavily fortified army base that you're attempting to break into for a, for a ice latte. Anyway, I drove the opposite direction 20 minutes and got my drink. No guards. <laughs> I'm good now. So I'm on my way. On my way and uh, just wanted to reflect, you know, yesterday afternoon, did the video how the horses raced from Oak Grove, how the horses raced in Pennsylvania. Was very optimistic, hopeful, I guess, about Ontario, but we had a lot of question marks. How would White Tiger bounce back? Was Unbeatable Kemp going to be Unbeatable Kemp of old or new, seemingly? Could stay close, trot without trotting hobbles on. How would Locatelli do in the open? All great questions. Carter Michael Deal. How would James drive Carter Michael Deal? These, these five very different storylines were about to unfold in front of me. And uh, the restaurant, the steakhouse was closed at the casino. So I took Kathy and Eric. You guys didn't get a chance to meet Kathy and Eric yet, but you will. Great people. Took them out to supper last night. We drove into... So literally, it's so weird. We are on the Tennessee border. So I uh, drove down the road five minutes, and you're in Tennessee. We went to uh, supper at Longhorn in, in Tennessee and uh, talked about, you know, the goals, what we're trying to achieve here. And it's hard when, you know, when you're an old horseman and you had a stable your whole life, you just want to fit in. You want to compete. You want to be able to do. And, you know, it's not like we're win, 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 but we have the horses that should be able to do well. So when we ship horses into a place like Oak Grove, and, and the reason I'm trying to tell the race office is because they want all the stalls filled. We have 10 stalls here, and we only have five horses here. And I said, well, one, I don't want to send horses that are going to be tripping over one another. Like, I had initially said I wanted to send Atlas Hanover. I thought Atlas and uh, took a dive off Dipper could bounce back and forth between the open. That's likely not to happen now. It looks like took a dive off Dipper loves it here. So Atlas Hanover, I'm not going to have two in the open, and that's what's going to happen. So it's unlikely that he'll come here now. We bought uh, two fillies, Era of Love. She didn't get in this week. She'll get in next week. We bought um, Stay Special. We're planning on entering her for next week. Uh, I'm going to train her tomorrow. Um, I'm actually going to gallop her tomorrow. Um, landing strip. Horn players on our way down here, so that's the five. Then uh, we had to qualify uh, Tailgate Buzz again. We'll talk about him in a minute. So I just didn't want horses tripping over one another. It looks like a pacer, now when there's a three or four that has room to maneuver, would be a good fit down here for us, but we're left looking for those. Now, I suppose, if more than you know, race is so-so this Saturday in the Stallion Series to the point where like, all right, we're not chasing these guys all over Pennsylvania for the same amount of money we could race in the now or two at, for the most part, at Oak Grove, or at Mohawk for that matter. Uh, we'll probably forego that, that stakes chase and uh, maybe send him down here. Now where his class goes for 15,000 US, which is maybe a little bit more than it goes for at Mohawk or similar. And I suspect he'd be a very, very good fit. So there's another horse. I would like to have the 10 horses here. And then when we have our two year olds here, and we will bring two year olds down um, to race in these state races. I mean, on the top of my head right now, the two year old Trotton Phillies in Pennsylvania can't come. I said, you know, we might bring affection down here. We can't. Because uh, unlike the Colts, they do start in very close proximity to um, to the Sire Stakes season. So the only Philly that will be coming down here, Trotting Philly, will be Lover's Play that I can see right now. The Trotting Colts side, I would say Pickpocket is an obvious favorite to come down here. And uh, maybe even Lonely Lakewood or Activation. What do we want? No more than two, I don't think, we'll bring down. And then we have the option to also bring down Arson if we want to. I don't think maybe Pacey Phillies. I'll look again. Uh, anyway, getting off topic. So um, I just wanted to make sure we have the right horses here for Eric to do well. And I said, Eric, there's no pressure. I'm not saying, hey, you have to win. My job is to send you the horses that should be able to win. You only have to take care of them and do the best you can, train them, put them on the track, and hope that they do. And yesterday, they did very well. I told them, tailgate buzz. I pulled the hobbles in quite a bit, for, even from Northfield, which is weird. 
but uh, I can see now why he made that break uh, for sure on the first day. Uh, I talked to Scott Zeron after, and he, he called me actually later last night and said, I see you trotting gloves on for Tailgate Buzz. I said, you and Buzz get off on the wrong foot. Tailgate Buzz is one of the most sure-footed trotters we've had in quite a while. I said, for him to make that break was very rare. He said, but I had pulled his hobbles in quite a bit when he qualified. They were out longer for Northfield, which is weird. And, and it's a different surface. The track down here is harder, so he could box him up a little bit. But uh, it was only found later on what kind of a mile that 57 was. Probably 55, 56 on a normal day. It's going on here now. Um, so tailgate buzz again will fit in good. Scotty was surprised that he needed them that tight. They said he's used to wearing them there. And they might have seemed okay to you. But I can tell you, I pulled him in five holes from where you guys tried to race him the other day. He goes, if I had got him away on the front and kind of just let him float along, I said, he might have been okay. He might have been okay, maybe. Either way, he's qualified, he's on point. That was a big, big mile yesterday. You know, you look at the open went 55. They didn't want any more. Those good trotters went 54 and 1 in the Sire State race. Like, those are top, top fillies at Yanaba. 54. Now, Scotty said something went later on in the card. Maybe the wind died down. I don't know. I, I left after the after our race. But he said that the one pacer went in 15 apiece. That was one heck of a mile over that track. It, the wind was a problem and the track was very hard yesterday. So, uh, tailgate buzzes qualify was, qualifier was fantastic. And uh, as I said to Eric, the horses we send down here should be able to do some damage. Era of love if we can keep the other filly sound. She's been sound since we got her, apparently. Um, stay special. Now, I haven't been back to Northfield, so I haven't seen her. Uh, Jason told me she's been jogging while well, the vet was happy with one with the x-rays. Yes, her knees are rough. He was happy with the x-rays, though, and, and the work he did on her appears to work. Appears to have worked. Uh, we changed her shoes around. Now, maybe it was a combination of everything, but the reports I'm getting is that she's, she's been jogging quite well. So, we'll see tomorrow. Um... Yes, tomorrow when I go with her, how she is, but and the days after that. But the plan is to race her era of love, landing strip, horn player, took a dive off dipper, per lucky, down there this week, and uh, have some other horses join them over the next week. So that's where we're at right now with, uh, with Kentucky uh, presently. As I said, I started to talk about uh, Tailgate Buzz a little bit and how he raced yesterday. Very, very happy, or how he qualified. Very happy with his qualifier. But we had nine horses coming after him in a big, big, big day. A big 72 hours for us at the track here. Uh, started off the day with Cutie Cumber. Now, little update there. Cutie Cumber will be going on Lazex. She did bleed a little bit yesterday. Scott thought that mechanically she was much better than the week before. He said, you know, I followed Aki, and then he really slowed me up in the last turn, and when I moved her three deep, she was flat-footed. He said, if I had to just... He said, if I... I should have just moved her when I knew Aki was... I saw him get out of gear in the turn before. I should have just moved her and come with her. He said, but when I did move her, she, she had lots of trot. Um, and then did, again, played a little bit. So uh, she'll be going on Lazex. He wasn't clear. He did say he wanted to take the snake cord off. He wasn't as clear to me about the shadow roll, but... You know, as I said to, to Megan, do as you wish. You guys are in charge of her down there now. And I thought she raced well. And obviously improvements to come with her with uh, with her going on the Lasex program also. So I think uh, I think Cutie Cumber has probably a, a pretty good race coming up in the next little while. Her first state race, I believe, is towards the end of May at Vernon Downs, which should suit her very, very well. Next up was me. Landing strip, uh, you know, I think. <laughs> Eric was fishing around saying, you know, he trained good this week. You know, how, how are you going to race him? I'm, I'm going to race him. I didn't come down here. <laughs> there's no going to be any, there's no merry-go-rounds this week. Uh, he's going out of there and he's going to race well. And there was some good horses in there, as I had said to you. Um, as I had said to you guys yesterday, there was a horse in there that was like 360,000 or 310, something like that as a yearling. Another one was 210. Uh, both those horses made breaks. Andy Miller's the really expensive one had rallied to finish third in the race. But, um, you know, Chris Beaver's horse showed a mile in 56, you know, a very strong qualifier in 56 at Miami Valley the, just the week before. And uh, for him to be, to be uh, for me to run him down in 59, 
just goes to show you how the track was playing yesterday, at least early on. And landing strip, although he didn't sprint by and finish off and drive away, he's going to get bigger. You know, he's still very immature. He's going to get bigger. He's going to get faster. But he did his work, finished the job, and got, the, got his job done. And, and I was very happy with the way mechanically he was trotting. You know, we had two head pulls on the left of him. He was running in bad at Northfield. We did some work on him. He was great yesterday. I said, you can let his hobbles out one more hole, Eric, I think, and take one of those head pulls off. He'll be just fine for next week. I thought he was great. And then to watch Per Lucky go and race the way he did, you know, I know that Eric didn't know the horse as well because although he was in the barn, our barn in Northfield, Eric was going with the babies and focused on them. And although he watched Per Lucky, he wasn't really... Had, he didn't really have conversations with Jason about how he was and how he was racing. And then for him, uh, he said to me last night, or yesterday afternoon, he said he, he said he was steering bad last week. He said, Eric, let me tell you one thing. He steered bad every time we've ever raced him, and I suspect his entire life. Run in, run out. He's good right now. I wouldn't worry about Per Lucky. I'll take care of Per Lucky. He went out of there great. Um, he went out of there great and followed... Uh, followed the leaders good pretty hot fractions as you can see uh yannick's horse really tired on the end of the mile and then rolled off stride halfway down the lane i thought i was a winner you know per luck he always you know he's got that murphy on the inside too but he always does just enough usually you know but he's hung a couple of times on us i remember i drove at the meadows once he did it to me he did it to me once in uh Northfield, I believe, also. That's just not him being bad. That's just him being a racehorse and trying as hard as he could. Just come up a hair short at the wire, but a great mile from him. Uh, that's a good horse to beat him, and he beat really, really good horses. That was a... I got down there. When I get down to Kentucky, I get looking at the program, these expensive babies that they're looking to prep down here in with Landing Strip. One that qualified in 56, another one showed 57, and I was like, man, this is going to be... This is a rough trip. I'm going to race the landing strip, and then per lucky is like 10 or 12 to 1 morning line, and and belonged at 10 or 12 to 1. It was a, it was a tough, tough field, and he raced huge, you know, just fell short, just a hair, just fell short at the wire, but um, I thought the horse raced really, really good. Who else do we have go? Uh, oh, I watched, um, what's this guy doing? I watched um, Red Overbach race. I thought he raced huge. One George Napolitano, I think that's who drove him, drove the horse fantastic. Megan had him good, and it looked like he was coming on. We don't often see Red Overbach sprint on the end of it. And Scott told me the track was not good at the Poconos, and it poured rain all day there, too. It was really, really windy. So to have him finish up, you know, Cutie Cumber trotted 59. I thought she was probably ready to trot 56, 57 down there. She trotted 59. And then have Red Overbach go out and tried 58 and was closing hard. I haven't seen him close that hard at the end of a mile, maybe ever. I thought, I thought he was exceptionally good. I think Megan has him very, very good down there. So really, really happy with what I saw from from uh, Red Overbach. Now, those were the four plus, plus uh, tailgate buzz, five in the morning. But the five at night were the ones that were the most concerning, right? How would Carter Michael Dio do? How would James drive him? How would he race? Stay close? Could he go without hobbles on? Locatelli, White Tiger, Unbeatable Kemp. Five very, very different storylines, but all five of them had at least a little bit of drama, right, attached them. Carter Michael Dio, was he as good as we hoped? James has been really protective of him in the qualifiers. The gate thing was a little surprising, and James told me, he said, you know, he, he got ahead of me, the bugger. He said, you know... I, Sometimes when you get near the gate, he can get a little hot. He made that break on Jody last year. And he said, I'm just trying to be safe. I know he can leave like a runner, so I was just going to time the gate. And as he started to come up to the gate, he dropped the bit. He said, I think he buffaloed me. I, th I think he got ahead of me. So I didn't want to, like, chase him up into position. So I'm like, ah. he completely caught me off guard. So I just let him file in. He said, it was a terrible start. I got away really, really bad. And I I'm following the, the favorites are up front. And if it wasn't for Phil making a break in the last turn, I might have destroyed my phone. <laughs> so I'm watching it. I'm like, come on, come on, man. I can race him or not. Come on. And then Phil made a break in the last turn, and James moved him. And when he moved him, for well over a quarter of a mile, he was trotting as hard as he could. Um, I think uh, last quarter, 27-1, and it was pouring rain, mud. The track was bad. Uh, for Carter Michael Dion, I'm pretty sure he wears flip-flops too, if I'm not mistaken. For him to go that mile, you can say, see how close he is to being ready to rock. 
and uh, I believe off what I saw last night for sure. And then uh, the trajectory coming forward, we'll race him once more in this class, and then he'll be off to uh, he'll be off to uh, Plain Ridge. We plan out before our clients start saying, "Oh my God, I don't have a Massachusetts license. It's five percent or less." Uh, there's not as many owners on, on Carter Michael Deal, but he will. I think it makes a lot of sense. One of our clients said it's only 28 horses entered and eligible. Ah, oh, I missed my turn. Well, that's what you get when you're not paying attention, I guess. Oh no, I can fix it right now. This way, that way. Okay, yeah, I can fix it easy. Um, uh, so Carter Michael Deal. As I said, I think it's a good thing. Ray, one of our clients, and a couple of other clients shortly thereafter said, yeah, there's 28 horses entered. They they were looking up the horses. There was no strict killers in there. There's some good horses. But the Battle of Bunker Hill is a, either they renamed it or it's a new stake race for this year. But it goes for uh, $100,000 by division. I assume that's plus entry fees. And then... Um, Plus entry fees and then uh, division split by division. So I suspect 28 horses. They're not. They can't possibly all be ready. I suspect two, uh, two divisions of, of 50 plus uh, starting fees. So 50 some thousand will race for. I think it's a good kickoff to his stake season and not too far away from uh, the Poconos where he'll race the very next week. So I suspect we'll, uh, if everything goes according to plan, Spitfire overseas and Carter Michael Deal will make their way down. I would imagine I'll just send them to Mark back with. He's close to, uh, he's very, very close to, this is a weird way to do this, but useful. Um, we'll, uh, we'll send Carter, Michael, Dio, and Spitfire overseas down to uh, Mark back with. Mark and Melissa back with can race them. And I'd like to go down and drive Carter, Michael, Dio, and Spitfire in Massachusetts. We'll see if we can get that done. I'm not near as busy as other people. I am, but... You know, I think I can make room to go race those colts. So, I'm going to go to uh, Plain Ridge for their first start. And then the very next week, seven days later, they can head to Poconos. Uh, whether they go right to Megan uh, from Plain Ridge or after the Poconos, I guess we'll be up to Mark, Melissa, Megan. Uh, we'll have a, a conversation between us about what's the best way to, uh, to approach this uh, moving forward. I don't know. As far as geography is considered... Um, and I don't need emails because we'll, we'll talk about that in the next week or so. But as far as geography is considered, um, I would suspect after Plain Ridge, if, uh, if it makes more sense just to send the horses right back with somebody to, uh, right back with somebody to, uh, Megan, then that's exactly what we'll do. If, if it makes more sense to leave them with Mark for the week heading into the Poconos, then we can do that also. That's something to discuss in the week ahead, but... Uh, the long and the short of it was that Carter Michael Dio, although he kind of, uh, as Kenny Middleton, the announcer, said, he kind of uh, blew the start. He certainly finished up very, very strong at the finish. And he's not really known for having problems at the gate. So, yeah, I think he just Buffalo James, which is a pretty smart horse. But um, just have to watch him moving forward that, that he doesn't do that to us again. So bring him into position a little bit earlier and let him uh, trot out of there. So... Um, Carter Michael Dio was absolutely fantastic. He answered all the questions we were looking for. A mile in, what, 56, 27, and 1 on the end of it. The rain came from last. I didn't check his last half, but I'm sure it was huge. 55 in a piece at least. So a great mile from him in the rain last night. Uh, so obviously we're starting to smile, but really, of the five, he was the least concerning to me. I was worried about all the other ones. And then out came White Tiger. And I know Amy was worried. She goes, you know, I don't know why he's flat. Yes, he's, you know, he had some stuff going on and he was a little sick, but she said he's been flat his last two, maybe even three. I said, honey, he's been good for seven years, for the most part, six years on the track, for the most part. He'll be fine. Don't worry. And he certainly was last night. Looked very strong. In fact, he, you know, he was in with horses he was supposed to beat, but wasn't that far off in with horses he should have beat last time either. It looked rather ordinary, but certainly not ordinary last night. The horse raced great in the, in the rain. Uh, and trotting away from them, not known for trotting away from horses. He usually either wins by a country mile or, or wins by half a length. And he won, uh, he did his work last night very, very well. Very happy with what I saw from White Tiger last night. Now we, uh, now two are down at all smiles. And we still have, uh, we still have unbeatable camp. He came out, James said he was very good. Um, 
he finished up right behind them, but it looked like his confidence was building halfway down the lane, and a good mile for him. Both White Tiger and him were very flat in their last races, and both came out with pretty strong performances last night. So I think Unbeatable Kemp is on the mend, on his way forward. They said he was sound before and after the race, so that is good. We're heading in the right direction with him. Stay Close was the only hiccup, truthfully, of last night, and you can see what happened. Uh, Louis was just being really protective of him, and then when they come out of the turn, some room opened up, and he forced him left. Not really what you want to do is stay close. He can run out and get on the left line as it is. He touches himself and hits a wheel. He'll do that. If you force him left, that would only compound that, and Louis has no way of knowing this about the horse, so I, I think if he had to be able to just kind of file him right and let him trot, I think he trots. Now, here's the problem. If I own him, he just races with no hobbles on next week. And now, I haven't talked to Louis James or Dominic about this horse since last night. But in, in my mind, I would just try him and leave him the way he was, right? Stay the course. But we do have partners on Stay Close. Pretty wide open group. A lot of people own little tiny bits and bites of, of uh, Stay Close. And I guess there is the argument to be made. Should we race him with hobbles or without hobbles? I, I'm going to have the conversation with all three of those gentlemen. Um, and then I think it won't be my decision to make. It'll be Dominic's ultimately and, and James and Louis. But I would like to stay the course. I thought the horse looked rather confident last night. And I know it was hard off a of qualifier, no hobbles on, in tough to wheel him first over. And I know it was tough for Louis to do that. But I think we all would have been talking very differently about this race had he done that. And that is not an admonishment of him. He did everything. He, he, did, he drove the horse right. He just didn't know the horse as well as, as I would or, or, or James would. So uh, we'll put him back in to go next week. I'm a little, I'm going to defer the no hobbles or the hobbles for at least a week. And I know I'm going to get emails saying, I'll oh, just put them back on him. I think we could have a very, very good horse here. Much better. And I said this a week ago when I trained him two weeks ago that I think we're on the cusp of seeing the very best, uh, the very best stay close that we've ever seen. And that was a big statement. And I know it's hard to, uh, validate that with last night's performance but he was very very good last night and I, I think we are on the cusp of seeing the very best stay close we've ever seen and that is a very good thing for all of us now what a way to finish up the night I really thought there was just no way that we would get anywhere near um, anywhere near Rob Fellows horse Kyle Fellows horse last night the horse was, has been great and looks like the best horse in Canada right now uh, they failed to prefer it again and put him in. How would Locatelli, he's been flat his last two also, right? I think there was a little virus going through the barn, although Locatelli is on the total other side of the property virtually. Uh, he's 500 yards away from, I guess he walked through, he's not, but he's a walk away from Tiger and, uh, and Kemp, so it wasn't like they're neighbors or anything. Uh, and all three of those horses were flat their last two. Now I see Harry... Uh, I forgot about it until I saw it pop up on the screen that Harry said he was kind of hoping to put the flip-flops on him. He thought that his feet were stinging him a bit, and I'm ever glad he did. Last night's tricky when you're in that mud. Is it hard as a rock, or is it mucky? And it's very rarely mucky in, in Ontario, and uh, Locatelli seemed to race very, very well and responded very well to... Um, um, you know, to the to the shoeing change into the trip he had. He finished up well. And I thought for just a second at the head of the lane... When James looked like James was going to bolt left before Oni Hall had made a break. I thought that he had enough trot that maybe he could wiggle his way through there. But I don't know how protective Doug was of the horse. I mean, they don't want to see the horse uh, banished from the open. And they wanted to fill every week. So um, was he a little protective uh, with the with the good trotter? I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if he was or he wasn't. But I know one thing. Our trotter was very, very good last night. So really, really impressed with Locatelli and the way he raced last night. So a great, great 48 hours we've had um, you know looking at looking at the, the horses just like just yesterday right we started off with tailgate buzz great qualifier cutie cumber raced good red overbach the other one in uh, poconos raced fantastic probably not speed wise but just optically looked like one of the best races we've had with them in quite a while landing strip was very good and he'll grow from that and learn from that and, and gain confidence from that win also i think he'll be twice as good next week Per Lucky just continues to be a nice horse for us. Uh, Carter Michael Dio, I think, alleviated some of the questions. Not that there was a ton, but some of them. How good is he going to be this year? I don't think it's a long jump from 56 last night in the mud to where we need him to be to be a top-flight colt. He looked exceptionally good last night. Um, 
Locatelli, White Tiger, Unbeatable Kemp, all three of those horses, and the storylines with them were answered very well. They all bounced back really well because they're good horses and look great. And the only question mark left from yesterday was stay close. And as I said, we'll answer that over the next few days, but I believe stay the course with this guy. I really like what he looked like last night before he made that break, and um, I don't think that break was just because of no hobbles. Would he have made a break with no hobbles? Absolutely not. He wouldn't have. But I think he could be a better horse without them from what I saw last night with his gait. But we'll see. We'll see how that plays out over the next week or two. I'm on my way, as I said, for the next four hours, three hours and 40 minutes or so, or four hours, to uh, Miami Valley to race What a Mission. I am a little excited. He was so much better than, than mannered last week and he is turning into a nice horse. He could be a really, really nice Buckeye Colt for us. I like driving him. I like, I like his attitude. I like his pop. Should be fun tonight. And then tomorrow, as I said, going up to just go easy uh, as many of these horses are just coming out of the infirmary. There was a little bug run through the barn and there was some sickness. So, um, let them get over it on their own right. Don't stretch them out hard tomorrow. 12 or scratch. 13 now with the mild injury to uh, to Cowboy. Those skin injuries are painful. You really just got to give them time. Two or three days in the stall. Then just jog them until he's sound and away you go. And I think that's probably uh, what the doctor will order for that guy. You know, it's frustrating. But um, it's always frustrating when the horses do that. But I talked to Jason after it happened. Talked to Lauren. Looked at the pictures he had sent me. And, you know. It's just one of those things, you know, babies being babies. Um, and hopefully, he'll be hitting himself now. So with that, uh, hopefully we can continue our week. It's been uh, tremendous. I know I saw the draw yesterday. Uh, eight hole in the eighth race of Brace for Landing. I don't really care. Um, you know, I just so excited to see this horse start his, his season and keep in mind and it'll be in, in the very front of my mind also his season actually starts June 9th right it, it, in a month from now he starts in the good times I think it's the good times on June 9th um, so bring him along make sure we don't hurt him along the way because we will only have so many starts and if things work out the way they are he'll race for three weeks before the good times another two starts for the good times hopefully then the swag then the you know the beal the new jersey classic uh potentially the canadian trotting classic or whatever one is up here i think it's a canadian trotting classic and then if, if he stays really good really sharp and sound healthy and keeps his weight on obviously a horse that i, I hope will make it to the breeders crown this year a lot of hopes a lot of dreams riding on a lot of horses right now but man this is the scariest time of year because we just don't know and we're all about to find out together so super happy with uh carter michael deal last night really excited about spitfire and, and crantini will race a week for monday he's the one that's actually going to keep me from staying down in kentucky for more than a day next week I, i'm gonna try because swinging senior races next saturday for sire stakes in miami valley to come down to kentucky again i might fly down and fly back um, race the horses here on the sunday and then um be in uh, Ontario for Crantini on Monday. So, so much going on. Uh, such an exciting time of the year. And uh, we all get to see it unveiled together. So, with that, I'll let you go. A long video, Tuesday morning, on the road, back to Ohio.